Well, the one really important thing is also what they're doing well is how to iterate that quickly, which means like it's not just about one time deployment, one building, it's constantly iterating the network mm -hmm. and trying to automate as many steps as possible, right? Yeah. And that's actually the principles of the software 2.0, like you mentioned with Andre, is uh, it's not just, I mean, I don't know what the actual, his description of software 2.0 is, if it's just high level philosophical or there's specifics, but the interesting thing about what that actually looks in the real world is it's that uh, what I think Andre calls the data engine. It's like, it's the iterative improvement of the mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. You have a neural network that uh, does stuff, fails on a bunch of things and learns from it over and over and over. So you're constantly discovering edge cases. Mm -hmm. So it's very much about uh, like data engineering, like figuring out, it's, it's, it's kind of what you were talking about with TenStorm is you have the data landscape. You have to walk along that data landscape in a way that uh, that's constantly improving the 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 neural network. And that, that feels like that's the central piece that yeah, they're so, trying to solve. And there's two pieces of it. like. You you find edge cases that don't work, and then you define something that goes get you data for that. Mm -hmm. But then the, the other constraint is whether you have to label it or not. Like the the, the amazing thing about like the GPT three stuff is it's unsupervised. Yeah. So there's essentially infinite amount of data. Now there's obviously infinite amount of data available from cars of people successfully driving. But you know the the, the current pipelines are mostly running on labeled data, which is human limited. So when that becomes un unsupervised. Right, it, it, it'll it create unlimited amount of data, which then they'll scale. Now the networks that may use that data might be way too big for cars, but then there'll be the transformation from now we have unlimited data, I know exactly mm -hmm. what I want. Now can I turn that into something that fits in the car? And that, pro that process is gonna happen all over the place. Every time you get to the place where you have unlimited data, and that's what software 2.0 is about, unlimited data training networks to do stuff without humans writing code to do it. And ultimately also trying to discover, like you're saying, the self-supervised formulation of the problem. So the unsupervised formulation of the problem. Like, uh, you know, in driving, there's this really interesting thing, which is you look at a scene that's before you and you have data about what a successful human driver did in that scene you know, one second later. Mm -hmm. It's a little piece of data that you can use just like with GPT-3 as training. Mm -hmm. Currently, even, even though Tesla says they're using that, it's an open question to me, how much, how far can you, can you solve all of the driving with just that self-supervised piece of data? Uh, and th like, I, I think- Well, that's what common AI is doing. That's what common AI is doing. But the question is how, how much data, so what common AI doesn't have is as good of a data engine, for example, as Tesla does. That's where the, like the organization of the data. Uh, I mean, as far as I know, I haven't talked to George, but, but they do have the data. The question is how much data is needed? Because mm -hmm. we say infinite very loosely here. Uh, uh, yeah. no. It's it's And then the other question, which you said, uh, I don't know if you think it's still an open question is, are we on the right order of magnitude for the compute necessary? Yeah. Um, that is, is this, is it like what Elon said, this chip that's in there now is enough to do full self-driving yeah. or do we need another order of magnitude? And I think nobody actually knows the answer to that question. I like the confidence that Elon has, but. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we'll see. Well, and th there's another funny thing is you don't learn to drive with infinite amounts of data. Right. You learn to drive with an intellectual framework that understands physics and color and horizontal surfaces and laws and roads and you know all your your uh, experience from manipulating your environment like like there's so many factors go into that so and then when you learn to drive like driving is a subset of this conceptual framework that you have right and so with self-driving cars right now we're we're teaching them to drive with driving data mm -hmm. like you never teach a human to do that you teach a human all kinds of interesting things like language, like don't do that, you know, watch out, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Well, this is where you, I think previous time we, t we talked about uh, where you poetically uh, disagreed with my naive uh, notion about humans. I, I just mm -hmm. think that humans will make this whole driving thing really difficult. In yeah, all right. 
I, I said, humans don't move that slow. It's a ballistics problem. <laughs> it's a ballistic, humans are a ballistics problem, which is like poetry to me. It's very, <laughs> it's very possible that in driving, they're indeed purely a ballistics problem. I, and I think that's probably the right way to think about it, but I still, they still continue to surprise me, those damn pedestrians, the cyclists, other humans in other cars, and. Yeah, but it's gonna be one of these compensating things. So. The, the, like when you're driving, you have an intuition about what humans are going to do, but you don't have 360 cameras and radars and you have an attention problem. So you, yeah. so so the self-driving car comes in with no attention problem, 360 cameras, right, yeah. you know, a, a bunch of other features. Yeah. So they'll wipe out a whole class of accidents, right? And, you know, you know, emergency braking with radar and especially as it gets, you know, AI enhanced will eliminate collisions, yeah. right? But then you have the other problems of these unexpected things where, you know, you think your human intuition is helping, but then the cars also have, you know, a set of hardware features that you're not even close to. And the key thing, of course, is uh, if you wipe out a huge number of kind of accidents, then it might be just way safer than, uh, than a human driver, even though, even if humans are still a problem, yeah. that's hard yeah. to figure out. Yeah, yeah. That, that's probably what will happen. Is autonomous cars will have a small number of accidents humans would have avoided, but they'll wipe they'll get rid of the bulk of them.